Good morning, afternoon or evening to all your trainers throughout the world. I'm the Late Street Trainer and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be looking at how you can prep yourself and your Pokemon for going up against the continent Pokemon Groudon, who's going to be making its return to 5 star raids on January the 19th, 10am local time and is only sticking around for a week until the same time on January the 26th. During this time, Kyogre is also going to be in tier 5 raids and if you're wanting to get up to some of them too, I've made a full raid counter guide for Kyogre on the channel as well, so go and check that out from the link in the description. But back to the reason you clicked on this video, Groudon is a super relevant Pokemon in Pokemon Go. It's one of, if not the best ground attacker in the game right now. It's a bit of a beast in the Master League too, especially since that 5 punch elite TM charge move became available. And that relevance isn't going to change anytime soon. Not negatively anyway. In fact, soon enough we're probably going to be able to gain access to an even more powerful version of Groudon when its primal reversion form becomes available. So. My advice is to get after this Pokemon as much as you can this week. The Shiny Boy is going to be available as well. We want to utilise the small time it's here, and so to help you do that, we're going to take a look at Groudon's stats, the weather boost conditions, its movesets, its weaknesses, and what Pokemon you're going to want to use to take it down as quick as possible, and hopefully bag yourself a Hundo or a Shiny. Let's go. Groudon is a pure ground type, which means that you're only going to see it getting weather boosted in one condition, and that's sunny weather or clear if it's dark. If you're raiding Groudon while it's boosted, you're going to be catching one at level 25, which is always nice. However, as you'll see from the moveset shortly, it is going to make taking it down in the raid a lot more challenging. semi silver lining though, sunny weather is going to boost some of your specific counters to Groudon, which we're also going to take a look at in just a second. The 100% IV CPs for Groudon, which are going to be the best stats to look for if you wanted to use it for both raids and PvP, in all conditions but sunny, is going to be 2351. And if you take it down while it's weather boosted, the 100% IV CP is going to be 29.39. As I said in my last counter guide, you've got approximately a 0.46% or 1 in 216 chance of getting a hundo from a raid. It sounds rough, but guys, it's definitely not impossible. I've pulled a few hundos from raids, there's no knack to it really, and it is ultimately down to luck, but now at least with those numbers above noted, you know what to be looking out for. Coming on to weaknesses, with ground and being a ground type, it's going to root to three types of moves, grass, ice and water. It's going to be double resistant to electric, single resistant to poison and rock, and then bug, dark, dragon, fairy, fighting, fire, flying, ghost, ground, normal, psychic, and steel are all going to be neutral hit in it. So there's a few more weaknesses than Kyogre to exploit here. They do have one weakness in common though, which is grass. So if you're looking to go after both of them this week, and you only have enough stardust to power up one team, say, grass counters may be the best option for you. Your grass counters are going to be getting boosted in sunny weather, but be aware, as we said before, if it's sunny, Groudon's stats and all its charge moves are going to be getting weather boosted too. Your ice counters are going to be getting boosted in snowy weather, and your water counters are going to be getting boosted in rainy weather. If you live somewhere where these weather types are pretty prevalent right now, it should help you out a lot because none of Groudon's moves or stats are going to be getting boosted by snow or rain. So, with all the stats and weaknesses covered, let's now take a look at all the potential moves that Groudon's going to mow your team down with. So Groudon has two potential fast moves and they're going to be Dragon Tail and Mud Shot, which is then going to lead to one of its three available charge moves which are Earthquake, Solar Beam or Fire Blast. You can also teach Groudon Fire Punch once you've caught it if you're going to use it for PvP, but you're going to need an Elite Charge TM for it. It can't use it against us during a raid and you can't teach it through a regular TM at the moment either. So Dragon Tail kind of gets left on its own here, being boosted only by windy weather, but all of Groudon's charge moves and Mud Shot are going to be boosted in sunny weather. On top of that, Ground itself is going to be boosted in sunny weather as well, and then it's going to be getting that same type of attack bonus on Mudshot and Earthquake too. So, if you go up against the Ground in sunny weather and it's running Mudshot and Earthquake, it's probably just going to laugh at whatever team you pull out and then drop them all into a Fissure. But, with enough trainers you should still be able to take it down. If you're wondering what counters are going to be best to use in each raid, as I say in each counter guide, that suggested team in the pre-raid lobby is going to be your best friend. It's especially going to help against Groudon because it actually has charge moves to counter every one of its weaknesses. It's got Fire Blast to counter your Grass and Ice, and Solar Beam to counter your Water Attackers. So, if that suggested team has got mainly Grass, maybe some Ice counters in there, that's a pretty good sign that it's not going to immolate or melt your team, it'll probably be using Earthquake or Solar Beam. Of which, your Grass counters are resistant to both. And if it's suggesting all Water counters, chances are it's going to have Fire Blast. Fast moves shouldn't influence things that much, however just be aware that Mudshot helps power up all those one bar charge moves incredibly quickly. So I hope that breakdown of the movesets was helpful because we're now going to take a look at what Pokemon you're going to want to power up, Mega Evolve and use to help you put Groudon back in the ground. Let's take a look. 
First thing we're going to do is take a look at which Shadow Pokemon are going to be relevant counters going up against Groudon. So of the 20 best counters in the game currently, 8 of them are going to be Shadows. Starting from the highest position, which is number 2, you've got Shadow Gyarados with Waterfall and Hydro Pump. Next on the list is Shadow Swampert in number 4 with Water Gun and Hydro Cannon. In 5th place it's Shadow Mewtwo with Confusion and Ice Beam. And then in position 6 it's Shadow Venusaur with Vine Whip and Frenzy Plant. Then we're going to move down to Shadow Salamence in position 9 with Dragon Tail and Hydro Pump. Not the most optimal moveset for Salamence though, so I wouldn't recommend TM in a way Outrage for Hydro Pump. I just think it's so high on this list because it resists every move Groudon has except for Dragon Tail. And then down to our 11th counter it's Shadow Torterra with Razor Leaf and Frenzy Plant. In position 14 we get to see Shadow Shift 3 with Razor Leaf and Leaf Blade. And finally, in 18th place, we've got Shadow Blastoise with the Water Gun and that Hydro Cannon Combo move. So if you've got some of these Shadow Counters ready to go, they could definitely be useful. If not, I wouldn't be too worried because now I'm going to take a look at the best regular non-Shadow Counters to take down Groudon. And to kick off the top of that list, you can probably guess, we've got two Mega Pokemon. Up first is going to be Mega Venusaur with the Vine Whip and Frenzy Plant combo, followed very closely by Mega Blastoise with Water Gun and Hydro Cannon. If you're going to use either of these Pokemon as a Mega, I definitely recommend Venusaur. Not only is it going to do better than Mega Blastoise, but it's also going to counter Kyogre pretty well too, if you're getting after that at the same time. And seeing as we can only have one Mega Pokemon active at a time, and they now last 8 hours, you're not going to be getting as much value using Mega Blastoise for Groudon, but then needing to leave it out of the raid for Kyogre because it's not an effective counter to that. Just something to consider if you're going after Kyogre and Groudon simultaneously. In third place we've got Groudon's arch nemesis itself, Kyogre with Waterfall and Surf. Seeing as Kyogre is in raids this week as well, everyone should have the chance to get a good one to help you take down Groudon. Only thing to really look out for using this Pokemon is if Groudon has that Solar Beam Charge move. Up next in position 4, another Mega, it's our boy Mega Abomasnow, using Razor Leaf and Weather Ball. Personally, I would recommend using this Mega over Venusaur and Blastoise, mainly due to the fact that because it's got that double grass and ice typing, we know that Groudon is weak to both ice and grass, so Mega Abomasnow is actually going to cater for a wider scope of your Raiden Friends counters than Mega Venusaur will by boosting both ice and grass moves instead of just grass. It is going to resist Mudshot, Earthquake and Solar Beam. Only thing to be aware of while using Abomasnow is that with this double type in it, it's going to make it double weak to fire. So if Groudon's using Fire Blast, it's just going to have to take it on the chin. Moving on to position number 5, we've got Tangrowth with Vine Whip and Power Whip. Next is Torterra with Razor Leaf and that Frenzy Plant Comde move. Seventh place goes to Gyarados with Waterfall and Hydro Pump, but the Aqua Tail Comde move would also be suitable. And then we've got Swamp at regular form, and Mega isn't out just yet unfortunately, with Water Gun and Hydro Cannon. Mewtwo secures the ninth position with Confusion and Ice Beam, and then in tenth we've got Feraligatr with Water Gun, and again these overpowered Comde moves, Hydro Cannon. After that it's Palkia with Dragon Tail and Aqua Tail. It's a shame that Palkia doesn't have a water type fast move really. If it did, you'd probably see it a lot higher on this list because this Pokemon's a beast. Then we see Mega Charizard Y making its way into 12th position with that Fire Spin Blast Burn combo. But similar to what I said about Mega Blastoise, if you wanted to go after Kyogre and Groudon during this time, then Mega Charizard is going to get absolutely clowned on against Kyogre. So you better use an Omega that's applicable to both. In 13th place, we've got Empoleon with Waterfall and you guessed it, the Hydro Cannon Comde move. Just be aware though, Empoleon is weak to ground with it being Steel type 2. Followed by Roserade with Razor Leaf and Grass Knot. And final entry onto this list, in number 15, we've got Kingler with Bubble and Crab Hammer. If you'd like to see more counters further down this list, I will leave a link in the description below. And a massive thanks to Pokebattler again for providing us with the raid counter statistics. Something you might have noticed in that list is that I didn't mention any Ice type counters other than Mega Obama Snow. And while that doesn't necessarily mean you shouldn't use them, I think it's due to the fact that by nature, Ice Pokemon are usually very glassy in terms of the defence, and with Groudon having such powerful 1 bar charge moves, it's likely that a lot of the Ice Counters are just going to get deleted pretty quickly as soon as Groudon pulls out a charge move. So by all means use them, just make sure you're pretty stocked up on Potions and Revives as well. So with Mega Pokemon being released one by one into Pokemon Go very gradually, it's pretty safe to assume that at some point in the future we're going to be able to get our hands on Primal Groudon. If and when we are, this Pokemon stats are going to be absolutely off the chain. If we compare base form Groudon's already decent stats currently of a max CP of 4652, attack of 270, defense of 228 and a stamina of 205, to when it's in its Primal form you see it gets a staggering max CP of 5910 and an increase on both its attack and defense to 331 and 251. Primal Ground is going to be a Pokemon that you definitely want to get a hundo of. Plus, if you're a bit of a shiny collector, if you think shiny ground looks cool right now, 
In its primal form, that goldy green colour turns into a beautiful obsidian type black with a glowing magma and golden claw finish. I tell you, this week is going to be a big grind for that Shundo. So to wrap up this video, a few key things to take away to help you take down Groudon. It's available on the 19th to the 26th of January, 10am local time. The 100% IVCPs are going to be 23.51 in all weather conditions except sunny or clear, where the Hundo stats are going to be 29.39. You can take down this Pokemon with three trainers who are all best friends using optimal counters, but for safety I'd recommend no less than five people to take it down, especially since now that the quicker you take a raid boss down, the more Premier Balls the game will reward you. Shiny Ground is going to be up for grabs, so if you do get lucky and get a Shiny, make sure you pine a bit because Shiny Raid Bosses are a guaranteed catch on the first successful ball you throw. And you want to get as much candy and XL candy as you can for this Pokemon for when its Primal comes out in the future. And remember to check that pre-raid lobby recommended team to try and anticipate what moves Ground is going to have so that you can use your best counters for that situation and you don't go into the raid and get your team wiped out in the first minute. So that is going to conclude this raid counter guide for Groudon. Thank you all so much for watching. If you want to take down some Kyogres in this week too, go check out the Kyogre counter guide I've made on this channel. The link is also in the description below. If you found this video helpful, a like would be very much appreciated. And let me know in the comments or over on my Twitter at Lakes Trainer if you managed to get some Shinies, Hundos, or even one of those super elusive Shundo Groudons. Make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter to stay up to date with all the latest Pokemon Go news and updates. If you'd like to see more videos like this, where I break down the stats, moves and counters for raids in Pokemon Go, get yourself subscribed to the channel, and I'll see you all in the next video.